The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine. Every day, millions of women all over America serve parquet margarine because it tastes so good. To market, to market, to get some parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You like it, you love it, like millions who say their favorite margarine. P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, made by Kraft. Well, let's see what's doing with the great Gildersleeve this morning. Right now, the great man is backing the family car out of the garage. Leroy. Yeah? Get out and close the garage doors. Oh, can't we leave them open? You heard me, young man, unless you want to walk to school. Oh, Unky, we're going to be late. That's not my fault, Marjorie. I told you two to hurry. And lock the doors, Leroy. Okay. Hurry up. Well, for corn's sake. Move over, Marge. You're taking up all the room. Oh, drop dead. What, and look like you? You little weasel. Be quiet, I'll... both of you, and sit still while I back out. Tight squeeze backing out of here. Oh, my goodness, I ran over the garden hose. Now, who left that hose lying across the driveway? Answer me. What careless person did that? You did, Unc. <laughs> Remember when you watered the lawn yesterday? All right, Leroy, don't rub it in. Marjorie, look and see if any cars are coming down the street. There's nobody coming, Anki. He went over the curb, Unc. I know that. Well, here we go. What's the matter? How do I know? Darn car. We're going to be late for school. For goodness sake, I'm doing the best I can. What's the matter, Mr. Gilsey? Can't you get the car started? Of course, Bertie. I'm just doing this for my health. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> I'm wearing the battery out, too. And maybe somebody ought to get out and push. Uh, Leroy? What? Push the car? A little kid like me? Well, maybe if you and Marjorie both... Me push this dirty old car down the street? Anki, don't be ridic. Ridic. <laughs> I wonder if... Uh, Bertie! Not me, Mr. Gilsey. I get all that inside I need around the house. <laughs> <laughs> Anki, why don't you get out and push? Huh? Well, well, sure, and I'll steer. That wouldn't be right, my boy. You don't have a driver's license. Ah. Leroy. Well, there's no use sitting here. I'm going to walk to school. Yeah, me too. But children. Goodbye, Uncle. But you just can't leave me sitting here like this. You wouldn't want us to be late for school, huh? <sighs> Deserted by my own flesh and blood. <sighs> What's the matter with this thing? Only ten years old is falling apart already. Uh... There's Bullard backing out across the street. Look at him. Nose up in the air. Him and his new DeSoto. Thinks he's my... Say, wonder if old Prissy Pants would give me a push. Uh, Mr. Bullard! What is it, Gildersleeve? Uh, I'm having a little trouble starting my car. <laughs> I don't wonder. Pretty old model, 1937. Well, it's a late 37. Well, cars are like people, Gildersleeve. When they get old, they wear out. <laughs> yes, well, I was wondering if you'd give me a little push. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I can't do that. Huh? Why not? I don't like to scratch up my bumper. It spoils the appearance of the car. Oh. I suggest you call a garage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Not at all. Goodbye. <laughs> scratch his bumper. That's Silk Hat Harry. Well, I'll try this thing once more. <laughs> Wish I had a horse. Well, cars run. 
running all right now. Guess it was just flooded this morning. Oop, I've got to go. Lots of traffic tonight. Hope the darn thing gets me home all right. Ugh, look at all those cars on that used car lot. Some real beauties, all right. I just had one of those I'd make Bullard sit up. Oh, it's acting up again. I better pull him here off the street. Oh, everything happens to me. Someday I'll get rid of it. Good afternoon, friend. Huh? So you want to sell your car, eh? What? Well, you came to the right place, friend. Smiling Sam, the auto man. That's me. You see, I... Well, let's give it the once over and I'll give you an estimate. But let's see here. Tires are shot. Stop kicking my tires. Paint's peeling off. Now look here, you. Kind of sags to one side. That's the side I'm sitting on. (laughs) Well, it's in pretty bad shape, friend. Best I can give you is $300, and I'll be losing money. Look, I'm not interested. Okay, I'll make it three and a quarter, but that's as high as it'll go. If you listen a minute, I didn't stop here to sell my car. Oh, you want to buy a car. Why didn't you say so? Oh, my goodness. Well, come right in and look him over. I don't want to buy a car either. Not right now, anyway. Oh, you're going to buy one someday, aren't you? Well, yes. No charge for looking at him. Well... No obligation to buy. Well, won't hurt to look, I guess. Of course not. Come on, Fred. Uh, well, just a minute. Here, yeah, now right this way. Uh, what's your line of work, friend? I'm with the water department. Oh, you read meters? No, I happen to be Throckmorton P. Gillisleeve, head of the department. Oh, a city official. Well, yes. Oh, then what you want is something classy. After all, you've got uh, a big front to keep up. Uh, uh, yes, I have. <laughs> I've got just the car for you, friend. This big yellow convertible here. It's a custom-built Mercedes. Well, like it? Mercedes? It looks a little expensive. Why, it's a steal. Only $4,000. $4,000? Of course, that doesn't include the radio. Uh, oh, of course not. Not for $4,000. <laughs> friend, I want you to sit behind that wheel. Uh, I don't think I'd better sit there. Step right in. Stop shoving Just me. for a minute. Well, as long as I'm here. <clears throat> ah, isn't that comfortable? Kind of low, isn't it? <laughs> Feels like I'm sitting on the ground. Car's roomy, isn't it? Certainly is. You could put a bowling alley in here. Uh, that's very nice, but I should be getting you home now. Just a minute, friend. Don't move. Uh, well, sitting behind that wheel, you look like a millionaire playboy. I do? Yes, sir. You look like you owned a string of polo ponies. Well, I never tried polo. Of course, I played kick the can a lot. <laughs> Friend, I want you to do me a favor. What's that? I want you to drive that car. But I can't afford it. Commissioner, I want you to take it home tonight and just see how you like it. You can bring it back tomorrow. But take it, friend. Courtesy of Smiling Sam, the auto man. Well, I don't think I should. I. Why, you drive that car down the street and every girl in town will want your phone number. They will? Give me the keys, heavy, heavy, (laughs) heavy. Kids come out and see this car. Will they be surprised? <laughs> Ta-da. What do you want? Gee, Uncle, where'd you get the car? Lucky! <laughs> what a beautiful car! Did you buy it? Well, I couldn't afford to buy a car like this, Leroy. I'm just trying it out for a day or two. Oh, well, if you're not going to buy it, what are you trying it out for? Well, I might be able to buy it someday, a thousand years from now. <laughs> Gee, it's a mile long. Oh, I love a low car like that. Look how close to the ground it is. Yeah. Hope you don't have to fix it, Uncle. You never could get under there with your stomach. <laughs> never mind, Leroy. Would you take us for a ride, Uncle? Uh, of course. Oh, boy. Yeah, we'll take a little spin right now while it's still light so people can see us. Get your little coats on. Okay. I'm going to change my dress. I can't wear an old thing like this in that car. <laughs> <sighs> what an automobile. Yeah, guess I do look pretty good here behind the wheel. Millionaire playboy. <laughs> Wish I had a beret. <laughs> yeah, there's Bullard. Look at him staring over here. That he thinks I own this car. <laughs> well, I'll just let him think so. <laughs> oh, he's coming over. 
Da, 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 da. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, hello, Bullard. Say, hey, that's quite a car you've got there. Oh, it's transportation, I guess. A mercedes. A mercedes. Must have cost a lot of money. Oh, not so much. Only $4,000. $4,000. Of course, that doesn't include the radio. <laughs> oh. Uh, Mr. Bullard. Uh, yes? Would you mind taking your hand off the fender? Leaves fingerprints, you know. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's all right. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, you must have come into a little money lately. Well, uh, Inheritance or something? Oh, uh, yes and no. I don't mean to pry. <laughs> well... <laughs> Must be pretty nice having a good car. Now you won't have to drive that old wreck. Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to tell you this before, Gildersleeve, but I'm glad you got rid of that horrible old rattle trap. It was a disgrace to our street. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a wonder they didn't take it away when they collected the cans. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm very happy about your good fortune, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, thank you. And incidentally, if you ever decide to invest in any stocks or bonds, don't hesitate to call on me for advice. I dabble a little myself, you know. Yes, well, if I ever care to dabble, I'll let you know. As, uh, as a matter of fact, I just got a tip on something pretty good. Shenandoah Railroad. Common stock. Oh, uh, well, I don't know if I'd be interested in anything common. <laughs> oh, it's a goodbye, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'll get the financial statements on it and show them to you. Yeah, uh, do that sometime. Gildy. Oh, hello, Judge. Good evening. Hello, Mr. Bullard. Gildy, what are you doing in that car? Do you have a job as chauffeur now? <laughs> I, uh, why, Judge Hooker, Mr. Gildersleeve, just bought this car. What? Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'll see you later. And don't forget, we'll talk over that stock deal real soon. All right, Bullard. Hey, goodbye. Stock deal. Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, what's going on here? Why, what do you mean, Judge? You know very well what I mean. Where did you get the money to buy this expensive... Okay, or... Uncle, ready to go. Oh, hello, Judge. Hi, Judge. Neat car, isn't it? Yes, it is, but... Yeah. Too bad we have to take it back. Hop in, Leroy. We'll take that little spin now. And keep still. Huh? Well, goodbye, Judge. Sorry you can't come with us. Just a moment, Gildy. There's something I want to know. How can a water commissioner afford to get a car like this? Well, the collections were good this month. <laughs> Gildy, did you come into a fortune or something? You never can tell, Judge. Come on, little family. Let's go take a look at our polo ponies. Polo ponies? <laughs> goodbye, you old goat. <laughs> More from the great Gildersleeve in just a minute, folks. Leroy was in a big hurry when I saw him on the street yesterday. When I asked him where he was going, he said... I'm heading for home. Bertie's serving waffles tonight. And I'll bet she's serving parquet margarine with them. Why, sure. Bertie always serves parquet. Bertie's a smart cook. Parquet is a perfect topping for waffles as well as bread and rolls and muffins. It's good on everything. Right, Leroy. Millions of women serve delicious parquet with every meal just because it tastes so good. That's not the only reason parquet is a favorite spread, however. Parquet is economical, a real money saver. That's mighty important today. Sure tastes good on Bertie's waffles. Parquet is always good, Leroy. Delicious parquet is the margarine of craft quality. It's made from choice farm products. Each fresh sweet pound contains 15,000 units of essential vitamin A. Would taste good. That's all I care about. Yes, that fine, fresh flavor makes a favorite spread. Wholesome nourishment, money-saving economy, delicious flavor. You'll like parquet for all three reasons. Parquet is the better buy for both bread and budget. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine made by Kraft. Well, the great Gildersleeve is still enjoying his role of king for a day. It's the following morning now, and he's proudly piloting his golden chariot down Main Street, courtesy of Smiling Sam. He pulls up in front of Peavy's drugstore. Yeah. Just drop in and kid Peavy for a minute. 
Got to take the car back this afternoon. Might as well have a little fun while I've got it. <laughs> yeah, better he'll think I'm wealthy, too, like Buller did. <laughs> uh, good morning, P.B. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'd like a cigar, please. All right. The most expensive cigar in the house. There you are. That'll be 37 cents. Thank you. And call again. Peavy. Yes? Don't you notice anything different? No, you look about the same to me. A little fatter, perhaps. <laughs> Peavy, look out the window. How's that? Look out there in front. Don't you see anything? Oh, yes, there's a hole in my awning. <laughs> Peavy, I'm talking about the car. Oh. Pretty big, isn't it? The hole in the awning? No, no the car. Well, the hole in the awning is pretty big, too. Oh, for heaven's sake. Peavy, I'm driving that car. Doesn't that make you wonder? You wonder what? Well, if I saw you driving that car, I'd wonder where you got the money. What money? The money to buy the car. I'm not buying any car. Oh, I know that, but... Mrs. Peavy and I are quite satisfied with our essay. It's economical. <laughs> Peavy, wait a minute. I thought it might occur to you, seeing me with a car like that, that maybe I came into a little money. Oh. Aren't you impressed, Peavy? For all you know, I might have inherited a small fortune. Well, maybe you have, Mr. Gillespie. But if I were you, I wouldn't go around putting on airs with my friends. What? Every customer is the same to me, rich or poor. I count out to no man. Of course you don't, Peavy. I... It's always been my boast that I can look anyone straight in the eye and say poo-poo to you. <laughs> Peavy, I didn't... I can snap my fingers in any man's face. In fact, I'll snap them in yours. Oh, Yes, dear, take that. Peavy, you're an old foof. Well, now, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> well, I would. Good day. Good day, and a poo-poo to you, too. Oh. <laughs> Floyd. Good morning, sir. Huh? Give me a haircut. Of course, sir. Sit right down, sir. Yeah. Are you comfortable, sir? Floyd, what's the matter with you? It's quite an honor, sir, having a wealthy gentleman like you patronize my humble shop. What? The judge told me of your good fortune. Oh, he did? That couldn't happen to a nicer fella, sir. Stop calling me sir, Floyd. Okay, I gotta hand it to you. Money ain't gone to your head. Big car and everything, and you're the same old commission. Yes, yes. Easy as an old shoe. It, let's get on with a haircut, shall we? Right. Um, if you'll pardon the curiosity, Commission, how'd you make all that dough? Stock market? Well, <laughs> not exactly. Oh, I get it. You financial giants don't like to talk about them things. Um, that's right. <laughs> Say, uh, Commission. I just happened to think of something. What's that? Now that you're in the chips, how'd you like to get in on a sure thing? What's that? Munson's Magic Hair Restorer. Huh? We can be partners. You furnish the dough, I furnish the hair restorer. Uh, look, Floyd, It's my I... own formula. Nothing but lemon juice and water and some dime store perfume to smell it up a bit. But... And we can sell it to the suckers for a buck a bottle. <laughs> uh, Floyd, We I... can bottle it in the back room here. All we got to do is hire a couple of old dames to squeeze the lemons. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, Floyd, I... All you'd have to invest is 200 bucks, a mere bag of telly to a man like you. Yeah, I'd better get this thing straightened out right now, Floyd. The truth is I don't have $200 cash. Oh. Dough is all tied up in stocks, huh? I'm not buying any stocks either. In fact, I don't have any more money than you have. The whole thing is a mistake. No kidding? On your sacred word as a jolly boy? Well, my sacred word is a... Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, hello, Mr. Bullard. Hi, Mr. Bullard. Hello. I uh, saw your car outside, Gildersleeve. Thought this was a good time to give you those financial statements. Uh? You know, on the stock you wanted to buy. The uh, stock? Looks like a good thing, all right. If I were you, I'd go in for at least $5,000. $5,000? Well, if that isn't enough, make it 10000 After all, I guess that won't break you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, good day, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, good day. Floyd, I want to explain. Don't bother. It's your dough. You got a right to spend it any way you want it. But, Floyd... You're a big shot now. Why should you help a fellow jolly boy? 
for the measly 200 bucks. But, Floyd, it's you see... you lying to me that hurts, Commish. Don't you worry. Floydy Munson will never ask you for a nickel. He'll go out and sell pencils first. Floyd, old pal. Clippers on the side, sir. Oh, Come in. Oh, hello, Judge. Good afternoon, Gildy. Are you all alone in the office? Of course I'm alone. Bessie went to the dentist. Good. It's all right, Chief. He's alone. Yeah. Hooker, what in the... Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Chief Gates. Close the door, Chief. What are you two acting so mysterious about? Gildy, there's something we must tell you. What's that? Well, uh, do you want to tell him, Chief? Well, I... I wish you'd tell him, Judge. No, I think you ought to tell him. No, I think you ought to tell him. No, I think that you ought to tell him because... Ye God, somebody tell me! (laughs) Yelde, I am the unhappy emissary of bad tidings. What? Just like the couriers of ancient Greece who carried fateful messages from battle camp to battle camp, trudging dusty roads, swimming rivers, climbing... Oh, get to the point, Judge. All right. It's my painful duty to tell you, Gildy, that at tonight's meeting, you will be voted out of the Jolly Boys. Judge, you're kidding. I wish he was commissioner, but he ain't. Kicking me out of the Jolly Boys, fellas? What for? Well, the members feel that with your newfound wealth, your luxurious car and all, you're no longer really one of us. But, fellas, that's silly. Yes, it's changed, you guilty. So it's better that from now on, we go our separate paths. But you'll take the high road. And we'll take the low road. (laughs) Look, fellas. And while, while you're drinking champagne with your wealthy friends... We'll be lifting our Coke bottles in a toast to a friend who's gone forever. I'm going to miss you, Commissioner. (laughs) Gee, Judge, listen to me. I haven't changed and I haven't got any money. But, Gildy, then how did you buy that big car? I didn't buy it. I was just trying it out. I thought I'd play a little joke on all of you. A joke? Sure. I was going to take it back on the way home. Come on down to Smiling Sam's and I'll prove it to you. Well, Gildy, I guess we ought to give you a chance to prove it. And I hope you can. Because if we lost you, I'd miss your commission. <laughs> okay, Chief, come on. All right. And blow your nose. <laughs> Smiling Sam. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, Sam, I want you to meet two friends of mine, Judge Hooker and Chief Gates. Howdy, friends. Hello. How do you do, Sam? Sam, these fellows don't believe... Just a moment, Gildy. We'll do the talking. Young man, we're doing a little checking up. All right, friend. What we want to know is, did Mr. Gildersleeve buy that expensive car over there? Mr. Gildersleeve buy a car for $4,000? Of course not. You see, Judge, I told you... You're sure he didn't buy it? Why, absolutely. He wouldn't buy anything that cheap. A millionaire playboy like him. What? He was just driving that till a more expensive model came in. Uh, he ordered one for $6,000. Oh, well, that's all we want to know. Come on, Chief. Goodbye, Mr. Gilders. But, Billy, but... you're no longer a jolly boy. But, Judge, he... <laughs> Well, we really put one over on him, didn't we, Fred? Anytime you want to impress your friends like that, just call on me. I'll be glad to... Uh, friend, what's the matter? Smiling Sam, I'm going to punch you right on your smiling nose. But, friend, can't we talk this over? Friend, come back here. Friend, be reasonable. Come out from behind that Buick and fight like a man. (laughs) Friend! (laughs) Listen to the jolly boys singing up there. Our little clubhouse. A swell bunch of fellows. We've had such good times together. I can't believe that I'm not a jolly boy anymore. I'm not going to sit on these steps any longer. I'm going up there. they just got to take me back. Hello, 
fellas. <laughs> well, if it ain't Mr. Moneybag. Floyd. Decide to go slumming, Gildy? You're in the wrong place, aren't you, Commissioner? Chief, you too? Don't I have any friends anymore? Peavy, you're glad to see me, aren't you? Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> well, if that's the way you all feel, if you don't want me in the Jolly Boys anymore, it's all right. I'll go. <laughs> Good night. Oh, fellas, let's tell him. I can't stand to see him suffer. What? Oh. <laughs> I was only kidding, Commissioner. You were? That's right, Gildy. We were on to you this afternoon, you fat faker. You were? <laughs> of course. We just wanted to teach you a lesson. Remember, Gildy, it never pays to pretend to be something you're not. You're so right, Judge, and I'll never do it again. I doubt that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Then I'm still a jolly boy? Sure, Commissioner. Oh, gee, thanks, fellas. Oh, it's always fair weather When good fellows get together With a sign on the table Who wants to play polo? <laughs> The great Gildersleeve will be right back. It only takes four words to tell why millions of people prefer parquet. It tastes so good, so fresh, so rich, so delicious. It's the perfect topping for bread, rolls, or pancakes. Delicious on hot vegetables, too. Parquet is made from only the choice products of American farms. And every pound is enriched with 15,000 units of vitamin A. And it's nice to know that parquet, the margarine of craft quality, saves you money. That's why it's your best buy for bread and budget. Tomorrow when you shop, ask for parquet margarine. See for yourself why it's the favorite spread of millions. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet made by Kraft. Well, here I am driving my old car again. Doesn't run like that convertible, but what the heck, it's good enough for me. Oh, my goodness. Stalled again. Uh, here comes Bullard and his DeSoto. Hope he doesn't see me in this old car. How am I ever going to explain it? Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, hello, Mr. Bullard. I see you're driving your old car again. Uh, well, yes, you see... I'm afraid it's all my fault. Huh? If I hadn't advised you to buy that railroad stock, you wouldn't have lost all that money. Lost uh, money? Yes, the bottom dropped right out yesterday. Oh, yes, it did, didn't it? I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve. If there's anything I can do for you... Well, uh, right now, would you mind giving me a little push? <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It was written by Gene Stone and Jack Robinson with music by Jack Meeson. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Louise Erickson, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. Uh, uh, pardon me, John. Uh, folks, several times during this season, we've spoken to the ladies in our audience about the need for nurses. We just want to remind you again that nursing is a respected and well-paying profession. Any of you who are high school graduates or college students should certainly look into nursing as a lifetime career. Your nearest hospital can give you all the information you want. This is John Wald saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. And be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Yes, sir. If you're a homemaker who likes to save money, listen to this. A stainless steel cake and pie knife with a sparkling six-inch serrated blade and a handle of gleaming agatron, an honest dollar and a quarter value, it's yours for only 35 cents and one top label from a package of Pabstet, the delicious cheddar cheese food. It's the perfect cake and pie knife for your table, perfect for kitchen use. Send 35 cents and one Pabstet package top label to the Phoenix Pabstet Company, Box 1723, Chicago 77, Illinois. Got that? 35 cents, one Pabstet label. The address again, Phoenix, P-H-E-N-I-X, Pabstet Company, Box 1723, Chicago 77. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.